Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck. Today, we are in Greendale, Indiana, here at the First Baptist Church of Lawrenceburg, Greendale. And I'm joined by Pastor Alex DeVico. Alex, hey. thanks for joining us Good today. To see you. Yep. So, it's great to be here in this church that is 200 years old. Man, that's old. It is very old. That's yes, old. That's it like, is old. like that before Indiana was even a state? It is. It is. Uh, Indiana became a state in 1818. Actually, this church had a lot to do uh, with the inception of Indiana. So there's a lot to come with that. Yeah, a lot of, lot of interesting stories there. But they started meeting in 1803 as a church. Uh, and then they formally uh, became a Baptist church in 1807. Is so, this the oldest Baptist church in the state? This is one of the oldest Baptist churches okay. in the state. Right. Yes, it's one of the oldest ones. So there's a bit of a, uh, of a discussion as to which one is the oldest. There's a church in Madison. Uh, they started also in 1807. So, um, you know, 200 some years ago, it's tough to uh, exactly know what month that was. So, oh, okay. Uh, there's like a little that. bit of a, yes, it is. <laughs> so right. There's been a lot of discussion over who's the oldest church in Indiana. Uh, but uh, yeah, both of us started in 1807 formally as a Baptist church. And mm -hmm. uh, we were founded by a man named Ezra Ferris, who came here from Stanwich, Connecticut. So Ezra came here from Connecticut, huh? Yeah, he okay. did. Why he did. Why Connecticut? Why and why, why come here? <laughs> right, great Not, question. I, and I love it here, but no, why no, did no. he come here? Yeah, for sure. Great okay. question. He was brought here, actually, by his family. So okay. uh, he was only six when they when they made his way. So he didn't have much of a choice yeah, in coming. No, so, you gotta yeah, go. Six years old, he gets, on a, he gets, he gets going on a caravan and And he comes came here down, and so. started a church. Just came came uh, a little bit in between there. So he was six. They had a three-month-long journey uh, to from Connecticut here. Uh, and his family settled in Fort Miami, Ohio. Okay. So yeah. that's about 40 minutes uh, away from here. Yeah. Uh, when, when Ezra was 24, he hopped on a boat, a flat boat, uh, and floated down the river and made his way to Lawrenceburg. Isn't that the most river town that's thing you've so, ever that's heard? That's such a great story. <laughs> He's it's 24. a classic story. That's 24, great. floats down a boat. Uh, in between that time, uh, he got his doctor degree from Philadelphia Medical Society. So Sweet. he became a doctor in between that time from Connecticut to here. So uh, really interesting guy. Uh, yeah. Lots of lots of turmoil on the uh, travel here between wars with Indians and um, um, you know disaster on the river and yeah. all kinds yeah. of crazy things like that. Alex, once he got to Lawrenceburg, what is it that he did with his time here? Yeah, so once he made it here, he was uh, already a doctor, as I said, so he began practicing there, uh, well, here in Lawrenceburg, um, just helping folks in the community. Oftentimes it would be without pay, um, just since doctors were you know, in need. Uh, yeah. So he would help uh, as many people as he could, but really his, his big goal in being here was uh, just that he was really loved Jesus. He was just a, he was a passionate missionary, and uh, he always made that the main thing about his life. So um, he pastored his little flock for over 30 years, which is a pretty incredible uh, amount of time, you know? Right, the, yeah, uh, especially that time period. Especially Staying that healthy time. that whole time, right? <laughs> 30 great. years is a very long time <laughs> for is, them. It yes, is. absolutely. People forget that. Uh, I think the normal stay for a pastor nowadays is around three years. So for, for somebody to be at a church for 30 years is, um, is, is incredible. So he was, he was pastor for 30 years. And then I assume at some point he passed away. Yes, yes, yes. He passed away in 1857. But before that, he served on the state legislature at the time. So, yeah, he was a very Doctor, important state legislature, yep, yep. pastor. <laughs> really? what didn't, so we, we should go down the list of what he didn't do. I know, really. This is great. He's got quite a resume. He, he was a pretty incredible guy, Ezra Ferris was. So he served on the state legislature um, and he actually helped to write the state's first constitution. Uh, he and 42 other members of uh, the state of Indiana met in Corydon, Indiana, okay. uh, and they met up and drafted kind of the first state constitution constitution at the time. So awesome guy. I mean, we're very proud of this guy. He's a guy that we like to talk about a lot. It's yeah, cool obviously. Yeah. And yeah. Indiana is so fortunate to have him and, I think and it's his a cool visionary, thing. you know, ways. So. Yeah, yeah. He was pretty gifted. So I, I understand he was buried yep. um, once his life did finally come to a, a close. Um, sure. Buried in Old Newtown. Yes, that's cemetery? right. Old okay. Newtown Cemetery. Originally. Originally. But correct. what happened? And he was moved to Greendale Cemetery in 1940. Okay. So back in 2017, when the state celebrated its, uh, I think it's sesquicentennial. Uh, Way to nail that. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Celebration. He was honored uh, uh, for statewide for his contributions Absolutely. to the beginning of the state. So. 
Ezra died right before the Civil War, just a couple years before the Civil War. Was the church able to survive after he passed? Yeah, yeah, great question. So uh, they did pretty well. Uh, Elder E.P. Bond was a friend of Ezra's and he succeeded him as the pastor of the church. So he took over then. Uh, At the time they didn't uh, have a place to meet, so they built a frame building down by where the Walgreens is in Greendale today. So kind of on the corner there now and uh, not really sure exactly what happened in that building. Uh, We think that it burnt down, but being so long ago, it's tough to know. So okay, that's uh, not a whole lot of records of that building, but that's what we're told is that there was a building there. So um, once that was burnt down, mm-hmm. uh, they needed a new place to go. They didn't have the funds to do it. So they partnered with a Presbyterian church in Lawrenceburg, which is a pretty awesome thing to see that come together and that sort of partnership happen. Yeah. Uh, the Presbyterian church was looking for a building as well. So they decided to build a church together, try to build a building together. So the Baptist church, uh, us, we said, hey, we'll jump in on this building project with you. We donated $300, uh, which was, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. People forget that too, but you're right. <laughs> yes, so absolutely. 300 yeah. bucks. That would have been a big deal for them. Oh, 300 yeah. bucks. They they give that money to the Presbyterians who was building their church. And we said, hey, let's um, let's alternate Sundays. Let's kind of go back and forth. So obviously that's a tough thing to do uh, yeah. in one church building, uh, right. especially when it's just a one room church building. So um, they were gracious enough when it, when it was obvious and apparent that the Baptists needed to move out and do their own thing. The Presbyterian church gave their $300 back to them so that they could go establish uh, their own church and build in their own place. So pretty cool thing. Very interesting. Yes, yes. Alex, you seem like you are totally up on your history. In <laughs> in the partnership with the Presbyterians, was yes. there something that the Baptists and the Presbyterians shared as, as a common focus? Yeah, great question. Absolutely. Uh, they were both uh, vehemently anti-slavery at the time. So it was a really cool thing uh, that they found that common ground. There was more common ground, of course, but that was a big part of who they were. Uh, the pastor of the Presbyterian Church, Reverend, uh, I'm not sure what they call them. No, that's right? okay. But the, 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 the guy who had who headed Led up that church. church. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yep. So his name was Henry Ward B. Beecher, and okay. if you're familiar with that last name, Beecher, in the Civil War time, it's familiar. Yep, his sister was Harriet Beecher Stowe, there uh, the is. author of Uncle Tom's Cabin. So she would come by the church, she would visit with her brother uh, and see him there. And in fact, the uh, real life individual that Uncle Tom was supposedly based off of, yeah. uh, his name's Thomas Magruder, and he lived just a couple houses down from the church. So it's a pretty awesome national uh, yeah. thing happening right in, in town. Alex, does the church that you guys shared at that point in time, is that is that still a building that stands? Has that too been destroyed? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, it does still stand. So they built it, uh, once they, they split away from the Presbyterian Church, mm-hmm. uh, they built a building in 1845. It was on the corner of Short and Center Street. And like I said, still there today. Uh, it was a very exciting time for them to be able to have a place of their own. Yes. Uh, you know, a nice, good building that wasn't gonna fall apart. It was just a frame, you and know. And you didn't have to share it. And they didn't have to share it. It was That's all good. their own. Yeah, it was all their own. So they built that in 1845, put that together. Um, It was the first time they had a baptistry in the church, which they were very excited about. Uh, They didn't have to go to the river for baptisms. (laughs) (laughs) Although that's kind of cool. It is a kind of cool thing, right. So that building was in Lawrenceburg, right? But we are standing present day in Greendale. What was right. what was the journey like, or how did we get yeah, here? How did we yeah, get here? Absolutely. So they spent 90 years in that building. So a good amount of time. Yeah. They were there for 90 I'd years. So, so. Uh, they had done a lot of remodeling projects. They had done a lot of work into the building. They put a new organ in, all this kind of stuff. And then 1937 happened, and that was when the Great Flood of Lawrenceburg. Not that Great Flood. Not the Noah Great Flood. But but, <laughs> but, but there the, was a lot of flooding in, yes, in like a yes. hundred years worth of time of right around here. So yes, that, absolutely. So 37. So that was 37. Was the big hit. Yes, okay. that was the big one. So uh, much of Lawrenceburg was just devastated. It yeah. was just destroyed. So that's how they found themselves there at the church in Lawrenceburg as well, is that the church was just demolished after this whole remodeling project and a new organ and all this things that they'd worked very hard to do. Right. So um, all but 10 members of the church uh, had their homes devastated as well. So just 10 members of the church were left kind of unscathed relatively. Nobody was really left unscathed, but uh, Uh, relatively. So what they decided to do was they met in the home of a lady named Miss Ruth Kirtley. This was in 37. Okay. Uh, And they tried to decide what to do, where to go next. Uh, And they talked about it and they all came together and they said, 
let's build, let's find a new building and let's, uh, let's, let's build our own thing. Uh, they decided to go up to higher ground, which is where they found themselves here in Greendale, just yep. kind of on this literally on ridge, uh, on, on a ridge l overlooking the river. So that was a pretty bold thing for a church to say at the time, you know, for all but 10 members to not have their homes devastated. Oh yeah, very um, bold. That's a, that's a huge financial undertaking for them to do. And uh, they went with it. So it's hard to believe that they wouldn't do that without feeling like um, God had a plan for them and for their future. For sure. So, for yeah. sure. So 200 years yeah. ago, yes. they, they ended up right here in mm -hmm. Greendale and on higher ground, do you say? Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, no, <laughs> no hominin in that, right? No. So that's right. That's, that's right. So, so they're here and from yeah. there, um, where, where do we go from for in the story? Yeah, absolutely. So in 37, they uh, built the building uh, called the, we, we call it the Martin Chapel now. It's the oldest section of the building here. Yeah. Uh, and it is on Tebbs Avenue. So our official address is Tebbs Avenue, even though the church is on the corner, sort of, of Ridge and Tebbs. So yes. uh, the official address is on Tebbs due to the first building being built off of Tebbs. So that's Martin Chapel. Okay. Uh, beautiful building, uh, very pretty. The architecture is incredible. There's an architect from Cincinnati uh, that they contracted to put it together. The pastor at the time of the church, he ran around trying to collect funds for the building uh, since it was such a big project, as I said. I, I was going to ask yeah. how, that, how yeah. that financially was sure. supported. So they got a grant from the New York Baptist office for $20,000. Mm, so nice. you know, this is 37. That's yeah, very that's helpful. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So they were able to build the church here up in Greendale and kind of uh, find a new home, establish a new place up here. The Martin Chapel. Yeah. That is still used to this day or have you just kind of closed it off? And Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think it would have been very easy to close a building off like that, but it's so beautiful. We, we love it. Uh, yeah. we, we still use it today for a lot of things, mostly weddings. Uh, it's just it's so beautiful in there. Uh, a lot of folks who come through want to check it out and uh, use what, it for weddings. So. What about the acoustics? It seems like in, yeah, in a time yeah. like that, there was a way that things just sounded Absolutely. better yes. and more, you know, like just deep. And yep. so what do you have going on there? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. We use it for a lot of concerts in there. We use it for, for some smaller group meetings. Anytime we can use that part of the building, we usually do. Uh, there's these exposed beams in there that are beautiful. Yep. Uh, the architecture is just, it's great. We love the Martin Chapel. So the Martins Chapel had this yeah. great architect out of Cincinnati and, sure. and obviously it's beauty. And I assume that the, the building that we're standing in now equally as beautiful in its own different way. Sure. I assume yes. there's another great architect. Yeah. Well, actually it was, uh, this place was made by the church itself, by the church members. Uh, they got together and put it together. Uh, they did all the physical labor. This is, uh, this is my favorite story of the whole church is just that they get together. Uh, they do this big project. Uh, they, they take on this massive understa undertaking. Uh, this was in 1970. 73 when right. the, we call it the sanctuary um, just pretty simple yeah <laughs> but the church got together uh, they did all the physical labor they poured the footers um, they did all the concrete work and even the stone that makes up the exterior of the building uh, they pull it out of Tanner's Creek um, really yeah from Bledsoe's farm so they pulled it out of the creek brought it up here uh, and they sort of constructed it like a big Lego <laughs> set <laughs> You know, you Pretty can kind incredible. of tell that. No, yes. just, no, no, not at all. This is amazing. That yes, is, I can tell place. why that's your favorite story. Yeah, um, yeah. I love that it was built by the members. So, yeah, me too. So it's 1973. And, you, and so to this day, yeah. that Pastor Alex, senior yeah. Pastor Alex, you, you are up here and in, in you're preaching in this yeah, very... Yeah. Same uh, place. Very, all right, very cool. Same spot, yeah. We love this place. So then in the 2000s, yeah. we, we had another addition come here. Talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah, yeah. So in 2005, uh, we built on what we call our Life Center, which is um, kind of a multi-purpose room, sort of set up in the sense of a gymnasium. So we can use it for all kinds of games and sports and youth activities and kids' activities, uh, but also use it for dinners and things like that as well. Filming, nice. showing movies and that kind of stuff. Like so we, receptions after the yeah, wedding kind absolutely, of thing? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Definitely use for that. Convenient. It is, it is all yes. right here. So we built the Life Center and over there we built a couple classrooms uh, and a couple a uh, couple office spaces over there as well. So okay, in uh, the classrooms, is that yeah. um, is that Sunday school for kids or is that like? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's where our small groups meet. Uh, okay. uh, they they kind of get together. There's um, a whole sort of TV set up over there and they can kind of have everything that they need over there. So it's, uh, it's been, you know, building on over uh, in three different centuries. We've had buildings in three different centuries in the 1800s and 1900s and then the Life Center in 2005. So 
Wow. Pretty incredible legacy. Yeah, I would, it's pretty neat. I would say so. I can see why you're very, very happy to be yes, part of this. Yes, and, very and much. Leave. Alex, this has been a great trip through all of the history, all of yeah. the different structures, buildings that the, the church has been through, occupied. Um, yeah. So, you know, where, where it is to, to present day. I mean, Ezra started something great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he, he began something pretty incredible. Uh, and since, since the inception in 1807, uh, leading up to now, there's been a lot of things that the church has gone through, whether it be uh, wars with Indians to make it here. Uh, the or, Civil or War. The Civil War. <laughs> we had to go through that. Two, yes. two, two, world, two wars. world wars. <laughs> the, every generation of the church has gone through um, its own challenges, its own struggles. Uh, I say if, if, if we're in a challenge or struggle now, just as a church at large, uh, it's, a, it's a battle for relevancy, I suppose, yeah, uh, in, right. in a world that's uh, not really sure what to do with church. So uh, that's where we find ourselves today. But uh, thankfully, we have an incredible legacy uh, to, to work off of. We have incredible people uh, who have uh, served the church and who have made it what it is. And we, through it all, like to think that our story and our legacy is just the reality that God is always faithful. Uh, we hope that people see that in our story um, because we certainly believe it. We have the history to look back on and say God is always always faithful. He's always good to us. Uh, and and we, uh, we just pray that he finds us faithful as well. Well, history would say that that's true. And I hope that your future finds uh, God looking on this, this church and congregation as faithful as Thank well. You. Alex, Thank you, you yes. are a joy today. Thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate good to, your time. Good to meet you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie Salk today. We're with Pastor Alex D'Amico. Alex, thanks again for being with us here, yeah, in, um, here in Greendale at yeah. the First Baptist Church of Lawrenceburg, Greendale. And I uh, just want to say thanks again. And remember, to travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Bye-bye.